Today I'm going to try and answer a question about capacitors and voltage ratings. Hey, what's happening guys? I got a question on a video I did, I don't know, about a year or so ago about different types of capacitors and stuff and the reader asked why is it that capacitors have a voltage rating like you can see this one is 10,000 microfarad at 10 volts but resistors don't well that's a loaded question <laughs> um, it has to do with the way they're made and the fact that resistors kind of do have a voltage rating it's a roundabout way through Ohm's law and it has to do with power because power is part of Ohm's law voltage current resistance power so first of all why does a capacitor have a voltage rating well like I said it, it has to do with the way capacitors are made and it doesn't matter what type of capacitor it is like for instance this is an electrolytic capacitor uh, over here we have a ceramic multi-layer ceramic uh, it's a film capacitor they're all basically made in the same way and that way is this they are two conductive materials separated by an insulator so right here we just have two little strips of aluminum tape and they are about six and a half centimeters by about two and a half centimeters and this actually is a functioning capacitor let's bring in a meter We'll put it on capacitance. Uh, let me see if I can adjust to see so you can see it better. Uh oh, pardon me. Let's actually switch to a different meter. The one I just took a look at last week. The Proster BM4070, which is an LCR meter designed specifically to read capacitances, resistances, and inductances. That's hard to say. Resistances. Anyway, let's put this on 2 nanofarad and turn it on. And I will take one lead, touch it to the back side. Oh, do I need to zero these out? Yes, I do. This is going to be a very small capacitance. And this is a bit tricky. Hold on. Okay, we'll switch to the a little short set of leads, so there's no indu induced capacitances in any of these. And then what we will do is we'll clip to one side there, and one side over here. Yeah, everything wants to be difficult this morning. Okay, we'll just touch it. And you can see there, we're getting about 0.2 nanofarad. So, this is the basic construction method for all capacitors. And these are two conducting plates with a ceramic disc inside. These use a film. And these are basically just this 
and they're rolled up. So the reason that the capacitors have a voltage rating is because of the dielectric material, the insulator, in between the two conductive plates. And if too much of a charge builds up, well then there can be an arc between the two plates that can blow through and short out the capacitor. And now it's just a short circuit, and that's why capacitors often fail to short. So by varying the thickness and the material of the dielectric material, we can get different voltage ratings for our capacitors. This is ten. This is a ten volt capacitor. Let's see what else we have here. That is also a ten volt. This one is a 50 volt. Let's see if we can zoom in. You guys can see that. Focus. Oh, almost. Come on. Come on, focus. There we go. So that's a little 10 volt. And this one is also 10 volts. But you see the difference in the size of the capacitor. Now here is another capacitor, and this one is 450 volts, more of a high voltage capacitor. So why don't resistors have a voltage rating? Like I said, they kind of do. While there are many different types of capacitors, there are probably hundreds of different types of resistors. For instance, this is a carbon composite capacitor, and this will be a type of like a, a metal film or carbon composite resistor, uh, metal film type resistors. And you can see they come in all different sizes. Like I, I think these big ones here are two watt. That's probably a one watt. That's a quarter watt. And, uh, come on, get on there. That is an eighth watt. So by applying Ohm's law, we can tell what voltage that our capacitors will be. Our resistors will be at their highest rating. Boy, I just can't speak well this morning, can I? So if we take our basic Ohm's law triangle and we say that V or E as it's sometimes called I R so if you know two of these you can find the other one we're not going to get into all of Ohm's law we've talked about that Whoop! now I dropped my pen anyway we've talked about that many times before but basically, we know that I is equal to V over R. And we know that P, power, is equal to I times E. But if we don't know that, we also know that P is equal to to e squared over r so we can figure out what we need so let's say for instance we have a one watt resistor and it is a one kilo ohm resistor so we got our p and we've got R. So there's R and there's P. So we know that P is 1 equals 1 squared 
over R. And you can't even see that. Right? Are you with me so far? All right. So the one other thing that we need to know to calculate our voltage will be our current. And let's say our current in this case is 0.1 amp. So if we do the math there, we get 100 volts. So a 1 watt resistor, um, yeah, 1 watt resistor at 1K getting 100 milliamps of current is good up to 100 volts. And the reason for that is the way that resistors are constructed. Allow me to bring in my resistor analog. It is a packing peanut on a stick. Now, if this were a carbon composite resistor, what we would have here is a mixture of carbon and an inert powder. The carbon will be our little blue dots. The more little blue dots we add to this mixture, the more conductive it is. The less blue dots, the less conductive it is. And these are our wires sticking out the end. Now, also, it kind of looks the same in a metal film resistor where they use a metallized powder mixed with a, an inner uh, kind of in semi-insulating material. And then what they do with those is they actually take a laser. That's not going to work, is it? They take a laser and they carve, <laughs> it's just spinning on here, and they carve a spiral removing a very precise amount of the mixture so that they can get a very precise resistance. And that's why your metal film type resistors are always going to have a better tolerance than your carbon composites. Make sense? So unlike our capacitor, where there are two separate materials separated by an insulator that can arc over and short out, our resistor does, just has one material. Your electricity is flowing, as an example, we say the electricity, the current is flowing in here at a high rate of speed and it kind of slows down when it hits this material. That's the purpose of the resistor. It resists current and then it flows out slower, so to speak, out the other end. There's nothing to arc over because this is one solid piece of material. Okay? I hope that helped. I hope it made some sense. And if you enjoyed it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the sponsors, big thanks to the patrons, and an especially big thanks to you for sticking around and watching for over three years now. It's been a lot of fun being with you guys. That's it. I'm out. Peace.